are you going to end up with a 495 total when you were disqualified on gear at 415? Like, what do you think the likelihood is of that? It's f***ing low, dude. What's up guys, Derek from PlaysmartAges.com. Today we are going to be talking about the super heavyweight weightlifter Lasha something. This is a last name I am not going to even take a stab at because I'll butcher the living fuck out of it. His name is Lasha this. So anyways, this guy is in the news again for putting up some ridiculous numbers. This guy is one of the, it's like a premier fucking elite specimen of a human who is a record-breaking athlete and had you know obviously his uh accomplishments speak for themselves 2016 olympic champion world champion 2019 18 17 15 european champion world record 220 and 264 and 484 so anyways reason he's up in the news again is because he just uh not him but i guess his uh, camp posted two videos of him doing the snatch and the clean and jerk with some ridiculous weights. So here we have 225 kilograms, which would be, now obviously this isn't an official competition, but you know, obviously it's, uh, when you pull up fucking 225, obviously it's, uh, you know, worth fucking posting, obviously. Ella, ella, ella. <laughs> Unreal, dude. So anyways, now we're going to go on to the next one. 270 kg. Fucking insane, dude. So a 495 total, which is absurd, dude. Obviously, it goes without saying. And if you go back and look at some of his uh, historical numbers, you would see that this would be, you know, a record for him. And recently, though, he did 485 in Russia for the European Championships. And this was his personal best in competition. But notably, in the whole point of me making this video, because frankly, I'm not a weightlifting reporting channel necessarily on like world records and whatnot but rather it's the fact that this guy was banned from competition for two years for testing positive for stenozolol also known as winstrol back in 2013 so as you can see here the european junior championships with a 415 total he was disqualified now this was you know many years ago and obviously he has a lot of time to improve since then but the notable part about that is like, how much are you really eking out when you were a veteran in the fucking gym? Like, how much are you going to get as a natural? Are you going to end up with a 495 total when you were disqualified on gear at 415? Like, what do you think the likelihood is of that? It's fucking low, dude. Like, this guy is absolutely crushing his enhanced numbers while he is natty now. So either he has the best PCT of all time that's somehow <laughs> pushing him above and beyond what a fucking peaked goddamn young adult can do or he's still using the same shit you know and just getting around it better and or not being tested at all interestingly enough some of these guys just aren't actually being tested you know this is discussed in uh clarence zero's video recently about uh, i believe he mentioned um lasha very specifically too probably for this exact same thing in this i thought it was interesting it was uh sports integrity initiative.com they basically outlined how he was banned in 2013. You know, he's banned for two years, didn't uh, compete 2014 and 2015. But even the years he was not banned in, he still wasn't even tested. So journalists reiterated that Lasha was not tested out of competition by the IWF in 2013, 2014, 2015, or 2016. So like, <laughs> not tested out of competition. So even with randomized testing, he still... With no randomized testing, he tests positive for Winstrol still in 2013. That shows how fucking lenient this stuff is. The Georgian who served a two-year ban after testing positive for Stenozolol in 2013 was taken out of the registered testing pool. So you get taken out of the pool in 2014, 2015 while you serve your ban. <laughs> like, green light to sauce the fuck up. 
However, he was included in the 2013 and 2016 testing pool and should have been tested, and yet he wasn't. So for like almost half a decade, this guy is on record as not being tested whilst being <laughs> a fucking noted doper. The main passages of a contract between USADA and the IWF obtained by ARD from an IWF insider states, USADA will perform doping control services as sample collection authority and shall be responsible for collecting samples at the event. Internal IWF testing statistics show how Georgia's Lasha was not tested out of competition by IWF in 2013, 14, 15, or 16. Any out of competition tests he did undergo were commissioned by other bodies such as the Georgian NADO. So any out of competition tests he underwent weren't performed by USADA. You know, the ties that IWF had with USADA, it was, you know, mutually understood that USADA would be performing the uh, randomized tests and it did, simply did not happen. And, um, you know, again, a lot of this does come down to resources available, the budget allocated for high quality testing and whatnot. But when one of the top athletes in the world is testing positive for something and then there is not even a subsequent, you know, strict protocol in place to kind of, you know, try and catch him when he's, especially when he's like off, you know, this guy could be fucking cranking his socks off and nobody is overseeing him whatsoever. And then he comes back and he starts smoking records again. Like, does it, what is the likelihood that he just, you know, took time off and naturally progressed and is now fucking crushing it? Or is it pretty obvious that he's been saucing his brains out and is just, you know, adhering to more uh, stringent protocols to get around drug tests, you know? Like, what do you think the answer to that really is? And now again, you have to keep in mind, this is a guy who's like a fucking Olympic tier, gold tier athlete, guys. Like, he is top of the cream of the crop, and this is what's going on. Now, obviously, other sports are going to have higher level scrutiny. This is not a representation of every single sport in the world, but still, at the highest level, a lot of these sports are essentially barely regulated you know a lot of them have just intelligence tests for getting around this shit and if you do get do get popped for something like stenozolol which is a synthetic anabolic androgenic steroid derived from dht how the fuck like it's almost like you failed the intelligence test like you're using a synthetic agent that you know what the detection window is sort of like you have a ballpark idea is this the compound that is going to be ideal to leverage in a scenario where you like it sounds like you would have a high likelihood of knowing how far out you need to plan the pharmacokinetic profile of it and or just don't use synthetic anabolics to begin with. So it's like whoever's in your corner kind of like failed you in that regard and you failed the intelligence test. If you did fail, it's pretty fucking obvious the fact that he can go for this long afterwards with no positive test whatsoever, improve on his lift year after year and continue to break PRs consistently and yet had one blemish on his entire career back in 2013 nearly a decade ago at this point um and it was for stenozolol like how fucking strict is it i would say very low you know i would say he is probably uh just had a big slip up in 2013 did not plan for the clearance very well whatsoever and even for the half decade that they have on record here with uh you know these uh documents obtained by ARD from a IWF insider this testing was not being taken seriously whatsoever so the athletes have ridiculous amounts of leeway and on in other sports does it translate exactly the same no it doesn't however the fact that this is happening at a high level of anything in a sport that is you know like highly respected in terms of what your accomplishments are as a country like if you are a you know, win the fucking gold medal in weightlifting. Like, that's a pretty significant feat, obviously. And the fact that this guy who's at the cream of the crop could get away for this long without being tested, like, one fucking time and just do whatever he wanted, you know, just goes to show how unregulated it really is and how much you can really push the envelope as long as you are ready for that intelligence test when it comes up and or if more stringent randomized testing is implemented understanding how to leverage bioidenticals and or you know designer drugs or whatever it is that your camp deems necessary for your individual performance metrics that you're trying to enhance or whatever it is that you need for your particular sport but again like another clear as day example that doping is alive and well and there are lots of people that are still doing it what do you think it's just the guy at the top that is doing it like no obviously all the guys that are trying to beat him and want to be competitive with him in any sort of capacity whatsoever are going to be needing to do the same thing and the guy who's going to prevail and win the whole thing is ultimately going to be the guy with the best you know obviously work ethic is important but also genetics response to drugs resources 
chemistry in his corner, etc. And it's, uh, you know, still going on. So anyways, thought that was an interesting one. Not that it hasn't been touched on before, but more notably because he posted this, you know, this 225 the other day, as well as 270 with a ridiculous total. And, you know, obviously he gets all the, all the praise and that's a fucking, you know, incredible feat and like good for him. You know, it's awesome that he's, uh, you know, fucking crushing it and awe inspiring, you know, other people in weightlifting or whatever it is. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, another prime example of, you know, high caliber doping essentially. And like, I wouldn't even call it high. I call it high caliber just cause he's at the top of the sport. Not necessarily cause it was, it's even complicated what he's doing. It sounds like the drug testing he's dealing with is far more rudimentary than, um, you know, like the UFC, for example, but at the same time, it's definitely a good example to give of the fact that shit is still definitely going on. And to the degree that you can increase your total by 80 kilograms after testing positive, like how fucking hard is this guy blasting? You know, like how much leeway does he have? Seems fairly goddamn significant. So anyways, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog. Moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, a couple podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind, Nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas I designed myself from scratch, recommended lab tests and diagnostics, and anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.